Hey guys, I'm Becky from Book Bite Reviews, and welcome to another spoiler-filled reading vlog. As you can tell from the title and the thumbnail, this is a spoiler-filled reading vlog for Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. I am very excited to get into this. I have read, I don't know, maybe 10 pages or something before because I originally, when I decided to read the series, I was going to start with this. Wasn't fully feeling it. Was feeling, a, I think I was just kind of in a slump to be honest. Um, and then I read that there's a different way that you can read the series and that is reading books one through three and then reading this because there are some things in here that are more impactful if you read it after those books. So that's what I've done. So it's now time to read this book and I'm very excited about it. So it has, I believe, four short stories. There are five short stories and my plan is to hopefully read one to two of them a day because I want to get this book done before October 1st and that's on Thursday and today is Monday. So just depending on how much needs to get done on this Monday depends on if I can start this but I'm I'm still hoping that it can happen. I think if anything my last desk shift of the day I should be able to start it but if anything it's definitely happening once I get home. I do have to edit a video though. I have things to do. I don't care. We're starting it. It's gonna be great. So right now I'm going to head to work and I will check in with you guys once I have started this book. Hey guys, so it is Wednesday and I've, I've hardly done some reading, but over the last 12 hours I have finally started this book. So yesterday I started it, um, read to like page 45 or something, and then now I am up to page 111. I'm on the last chapter of the second story. So that's exciting. I've made that dent. Um, I'm going to try to read some more at work today and then read when I get home and read as much as I can tomorrow and hopefully get this done before October 1st because that was my goal. We'll see. <laughs> so let's talk so far. The first story is about Sam and Selena going to the Pirate King's Island um, in order to have him pay a debt and it turns out that they're actually there to pick up slaves for Arabin. And that is something that is like so beneath them. And Selena gets really, really upset about it. And so her and Sam concoct a plan to free the slaves. So what I think is funny is that for half of the story, it is Selena and Sam hating each other. And then they somehow like forge this bond because they both want to do this thing that goes super against their master. But it's the right thing to do. And they kind of forge a bond and now sparks are flying. Not flying, but there's sparks are sizzling. I really think this story is going to have more impact later once I read the other main books in the series because I'm pretty sure that Selena is going to have to meet the Pirate King again because the King has been doing some shady stuff near the Pirate King's territory. And there have been like some rumors of things that he has told people of what's going on. So I feel like she's gonna have to see him again. And they made an oath that if he ever sees her again, he's allowed to kill her. So we'll see how that plays out. Because right now, like it was a fun insight. But I think just from what I've learned from book three, like this is gonna have a deeper impact if we ever encounter him again, which I think we're going to. And then the second story is about a barmaid that Selena ends up helping and teaching her self-defense um, when she ends up getting attacked in front of Selena. Selena and Sam went back, Arabin found out what they did, beat the crap out of Selena and has sent her away. She has no idea what's happened to Sam and on her way to the Red Desert where she's going to get training, she meets this barmaid who is a healer and I think she's going to kind of like help this girl get to where she's going. And I think, again, this is going to be somebody that we may hopefully meet in the future to see that she did end up doing what she's always wanted to do, which is to go to this healer school, this healer academy, and learn more about her gifts. So yeah, I'm kind of just like getting the feeling, and I could be totally wrong, but I'm just kind of getting the feeling that while these books are like nice little anecdotal things at the moment, 
I just feel this deeper meaning from this book of like we are going to see these people in the future or hear about them in the future and it's going to be so much more impactful later. So yeah, um, it's basically two out of three done. I'm going to try to read at least one and a half <laughs> today and then the other one and a half tomorrow. But yeah, really there's not a whole lot of um, like reactionary moments or anything. They're, you know, it, they're short stories. So all I can really talk about is what I think about them after the fact. So yeah, I was kind of hoping to have a little bit more reactionary things happening. Maybe um, for the future ones, because we're already five pages. I'm going to be done with story two. And we have three stories left, which is a much bigger chunk than the first two stories. So these ones might be a bit more impactful, a bit more reactionary. We will see, but I will keep you guys updated. Hey guys, so it is just past midnight on Thursday night, Friday morning, which means it's technically October 1st. However, I have not finished the book. I have just over 100 pages left, and I haven't gone to bed yet. So I'm counting this book as a September book, even though I'm technically finishing it in October. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. If I finish it before I go to sleep, then it happened in September. So yeah, um, let's talk really quick. So for one, I am usually somebody who doesn't completely love short story bind ups. I usually find that they don't really have a lot of purpose and I usually don't read them unless it's for a series that I like fully love so I want more content. However, this short story set really gives you a lot of behind the scenes of Selena's past when it comes to being with the assassins. You really don't learn anything about her life before the age of eight until you read books two and three. But it really, you really learn a lot about her time with the Assassin Guild. So, um, I've already talked about stories one and two, I believe, but story three, I really, really enjoyed. I feel like, uh, I've just finished story four. So stories three and four were really, really interesting and really, really good. Story three, I can't believe everything that happened. Like, I was like hardly highlighting until stories three and four. What happened with Ansel was nuts. Um, but honestly, as soon as she told Selena not to come to the meeting with her, I knew that she was a spy. Like, saw it coming a thousand miles away. And I think Selena did too, but I think she just didn't want to believe it because she wanted to have a friend. So I think she was kind of well aware subconsciously. I'm very interested to see if she's ever going to meet the people that we have encountered in stories one through three because I really want to see where they're at now and stuff like that. So I really hope that we see them in future books. Story four, however, <laughs> has been pretty intense, but also a whole lot of traction has been made in terms of her and Sam. So they have told each other that they love them. Well, I don't know if Selena has told Sam that she loves him, but Sam has definitely told her. And he just professed to her that he wants to be with her wherever she goes, even to hell forever and ever. And I'm like, you're, you're gonna die. And I just, I'm so sad <laughs> because I know he's gonna die. And I don't want it to happen and there's nothing I can do because I know for a fact he's going to die. Now what I'm really upset about is I'm sure that this last story is when Sam dies and I am fully expecting to ball my ass out. <laughs> totally expecting it. So not really looking forward to that but also looking forward to it. This last story is going to be intense. There is also two other things I want to talk about. Number one, um, Arabin, which I think is how you say his name, such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. Um, this whole, like, you have to forgive me, here's all these gifts, I promise to never touch you again, that is full on manipulation, uh, just chock full of red flags for an abusive relationship. I mean, the entire thing 
is a very fucked up and abusive relationship, whether it be physical or mental, but just ugh, so disgusting. I'm so happy that Selena never forgave him, but just like her moments of weakness where like she kind of slightly feels bad and doesn't want to tell him that she's moving out because she knows that he's going to be hurt. Like, ew. It was so gross reading that. And then to see what he does at the end by taking her gold and buying, what's her name, Lysandra or whatever. Ugh, like I'm so disgusted with him. So disgusted with him. And while on one hand, like, I'm happy that Selena met him and became an assassin because now she has the skill set to hopefully become who she's supposed to become, which is hopefully a queen and rule the world. But on the other hand, I'm just like, I wish you never encountered this guy. Like, so gross. So gross. She definitely could have had it worse. She could be a prostitute or work for a worse assassin or just be poor or dead. Um, but she could have also been part of the silent assassins and had a great life. Just saying. So yeah, super gross. The other thing I want to talk about though is when Selena is at that party in story four at 3 a.m. some masked nobles show up. One of them has a sword and looks like he does not want to be there. And the other one has beautiful, what is it, sapphire eyes. So it's 1000% Kale and Dorian. And so it makes so much more sense in book one when they come and take her from Endover, which I think is how you say that prison or Endovie, I don't know. One of them says to her, have we ever met before? And she, I think she says something like, you'd remember if we did, or I don't think so, or whatever. But there is a mention from one of them that they think that they have met her before, that she looks familiar. And it's because she has met them. For a split second, she did meet them. It wasn't a long interaction. That's why they can't fully remember her. However, I think she knew exactly who they were based on the sword. She's an assassin. She can recognize weapons and warriors. So the fact that she clocked Kale with his sword to then see him later on, she knew. She totally freaking knew. I was just like, oh, I know who they are. <laughs> So that was really, really cool. That was such a cool moment. And like the thought process in Sarah J. Moss's mind where that scene happens in book one, like it's, I think, not until after book three, which is the order that I'm reading this in, I think that's when these short stories were made. So the fact that she already had that gem lined up for them to say, do I know you? To then, years later, be like, she met them. Like, the craftsmanship. God, so insane. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to update you because I have one story left, and this last one was just so intense, and I am just fully aware that I'm going to bawl my eyes out. So I wanted to update you, say that I'm on the last story. It's technically past midnight. I don't care. We're just going to do it. I'm going to go and get back in bed and finish this book. Ugh. I don't want to cry, but I want to cry. Hey guys, so it is um, many weeks later after I finished this book because I didn't realize that I never came on and closed out this vlog. I did end up reading the last story before going to bed. It was a hard time uh, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, number one, I was so, so extremely exhausted. So I ended up switching to the audiobook, which I personally don't recommend. Um, it's a male voice, so it's not like you're hearing Selena's voice. The book is told in third person point of view, so I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but it doesn't make for the greatest reading experience. I'll say that the narrator, he has a nice voice, but it's like an older voice and I don't know. 
It's just weird. But anyways, I did it because I wanted to <laughs> finish the book before going to bed so that it could be done before October 1st. Since we were counting October 1st not happening until I went to bed. So I played it on like two times speed and it was so, so intense. I read along on my Kindle while listening to the audio and my God, this book crushes you. It was a lot. It was very heavy. Um, definitely cried, definitely cried a lot. And it's just so, so dark, so dark. Um, one thing I was pretty grateful about is I was always under the impression that Selena was with Sam when he gets kidnapped and tortured to death. Um, I thought that she was there and had to watch it all happen. Luckily, she's not. Um, she just sees his body afterwards and she knows enough to know exactly what happened to him. Um, but my God, was that heartbreaking. I hate Arabin with every fiber in my being. I am 1000% sure that this was his doing. I think at the end, if I'm not mistaken, I have the book here to refer to in case I forgot what the heck happened in this book since it's been many weeks later. But I'm pretty sure that there is a part where it's like from Arabin's point of view and he is talking to that psycho and was like, you know, I up upheld my end of the bargain. Yeah, so Selena gets um, arrested or, you know, she's going to um, Endovir and Erebin is talking to Rourke Ferran and they're watching the carriage that took her drive away and he asks, aren't you going to go after her? And he said, obviously not. You know, Fran like makes a comment and he's like, watch who you're speaking to. And he's like, you might want to consider how you speak to me now. And then he said, and you might want to consider who gave you your crown. So Arabin set this all up. He set up Selena. She is so blind to it because of just all of the brainwashing and abuse and misguided trust that has been instilled in her with him. And he did this. He did this. I also like... It's almost like, was this always his plan? You know, like, did he keep Sam around until he found Selena? And then, like, the plan was always to dispose of him at some point? Or was it just because she left him to be with Sam? Like, was Arabin hoping this was going to turn into a different kind of relationship? Which is disgusting. Yeah, it's just, it's so intense. And then that very last sentence... And then Selena walked into the salt mines. Like, ugh. And her mantra. Like, I really see why people were saying to read books one through three and then read this one. Because I agree. It is so much more impactful once you kind of, like, know exactly who Selena is. A lot of things mean more to you because you know what happens in the future to her. And I think, too, like... She says that mantra all the time in the books and she talks a little bit more about Sam in each book. So the fact that you kind of like understand what Sam means to her and then to go back when they hated each other and kind of lived through that past, it it's honestly the best way to read this. So if you're thinking about reading the series, you haven't yet, and for some reason you're watching these spoiler vlogs because you're a psycho and you want to be spoiled, or if you're planning on rereading them, I would suggest to read it in this way, to read books one through three and then read Assassin's Blade. This was excellent. Five out of five stars. I had a really, really good time. This one is definitely not as good as the main stories. That should go without saying. Most, you know, novellas for a series aren't, but it is still getting five stars. I, I always do my, like, short stories or short story collections on a totally different scale. Um, it's more about like the enjoyment and how much impact it has on the series and things like that. There's a lot of different factors. So while it is getting a five star when I've also given all of the books in the series a five star, even though I feel like Crown of Midnight should maybe get four stars, but really not. It really was a five star. It's like a 4.75. Even though it's getting a five star, it's not as great as those books because I mean, it's, it's slightly boring sometimes just because you're you know, you're way, way, way back in the past. This is a totally different Selena than you know 
now and you kind of have like no idea what the heck is going on the cool thing that I really liked is that these aren't they can be their own separate story you can just read one and be good but if you read them all and you read them all in order back to back they all flow together and they all make sense and you kind of need the one before to to understand what's happening in this one and it's just you learn so much more about Selena. You have so much more knowledge of the past. And I feel like we have more knowledge for the future. I'm really, really hoping that we meet these characters again. Because I'm really interested to see what they think of her now that she is Aelin. And also just like, what do they think now all these years later? You know? Very interesting. Very, very cool book. So happy I read it. So that is it for this reading vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. The next one that I will be doing is Queen of Shadows. That's it for this vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you stick around. Don't forget if you enjoyed it to please give it a thumbs up. Keep reading, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!